at the United States Invitational Young Physicist Tournament, a student gets up and gives a 10 minute presentation. Once we have the recorded motion, we use this program called Tracker. And what it does is it lets you set up a reference length and it will track a motion based off of image recognition and it'll record R, phi, X, Y, whatever parameters you wish. And it'll also take time to remove those parameters. And it's not over. The other team comes in and says, we thank you for your presentation, but we just have a few questions. And then they have a discussion. That's, it's, it's all about the search for the truth, but it's a debate. It's not a political debate. It's not about digging in your heels and showing that you're right. It's about finding what the physics truly says. A lot of stretch, but there wouldn't be much transfer. So you're saying that if you have a low spring constant and it's oscillating a lot, then somehow it's behaving just like a pendulum? Well, if it's a weak spring constant, it's not going but to have much force pulling it back up. Isn't a low spring constant? It's not balanced here. Isn't a low spring constant have more elasticity? So I don't understand how something with more elasticity yes. would exhibit less spring-like behavior. It stretches more, but it has less restitutional force. It doesn't pull it back nearly as strongly. Of course you said that kinetic energy is only increasing in the first stages. Right. Can you explain why did you say this? Like, what kind of power cells? Is it a battery or uh, a, a battery? A battery. Yeah. So, and you assume that current is constant. How, how long is the experiment period, time period? It's a combination of uh, physics and debate. You um, develop a physics project and you have to defend it. It's very different from classroom learning. You're not completing some homework assignment and be done with it. You have to be able, you know, be responsible for your work and defend it. And that's what I, what I regard is a very valuable experience because uh, in real life you have to be proud of your work, be responsible for your work. This program gives me control over my education. It trusts me to figure out what I need to do and it just is like, here's a problem for you to think about and pick away at, figure out how you want to approach it. And I really appreciate having that ability to control my education about something that I really enjoy. It kind of teaches you both how to present yourself and drive yourself to figure out what's going on. So in our model we made some assumptions. We assumed a constant spring constant which is accurate to plus or minus one percent. We assumed the string and spring were massless. We assumed a rigid system which is that there is no bending between the string and the spring and no bending between the mass and the spring. And then by neglecting friction and drag we assume conservation of energy. It naturally draws me into the subject, and it's not a class requirement that I'm, I'm gonna spend 40 minutes a day and be done with it. I might just do it uh, when I'm free because I want to solve the puzzle. It really encourages critical thinking skills because you're looking at it and you're like, okay, why does their experimental error work? Why is their theory valid? And you're just running through all these things as quick as you can, trying to do this quick peer review, uh, investigation, kind of like grading lab reports as a teacher, just only you have three minutes to come up with your responses. And so you're running through the math, running through it, taking notes on post-its, thinking, organizing your thoughts, and then you have to get up and start asking questions. And it's a really good process into how to really defend a thorough presentation, and also how to figure out what's wrong with something that appears good but may not be. It, it's turning physics alive, and it's really stimulating my brain, and forcing me to combine all my talents in this uh, physics fight and it's very rewarding so far. Our students are Woodbury students first and foremost, which means that they have to go to athletics in the afternoon. They have study hall in the evenings. They are taking not just physics, but they're taking five classes, six classes, in all kinds of areas. Um, Tim Sheng is our, as a debater. Marion Anderson, our captain, he used to be a debater and now he's a climber. The quarterback of the football team, a state championship quarterback of the football team, is on the physics team for us. We have all kinds of people and we always have, and that's one of the strengths of our physics team is that uh, we don't have to teach team building. We don't have to teach the idea that everybody has a role in a physics fight. Our teamwork is um, doing a lot of stuff in the tournament. For example, when Marion was given his Avogadro opposition, uh, you can see all of our team member, each, each of us, Justin, Ford, and me, we were writing down notes, 10 notes each person, and give it to Marion for help, helping him to oppose. And I think that teamwork uh, partly won the tournament for us in the second place. The whole point of the U.S. Invitational Young Physicist Tournament is that it is not just a student 
process. It is, a, uh, it, it is involving the faculty as well. The faculty are an integral part of the team. And at Woodbury, we have three teachers involved with the physics fights. We have Eric Bourne, Paul Vickers, and me. Our students are able to go to whatever university they attend and go to the physics department and say, all right, first of all, let me show you what I did. And I told you, it's better than many undergraduate research projects. So the professors can see what they did. And then they can say, you give me a project and I know how to start it. I know what needs to be done. What we run here in the research physics course is identical in structure to a graduate laboratory with the professors helping out the grad students, the grad students actually doing the hands-on research, but the professors giving them guidance and showing them what needs to be done. As Mr. Jacobs mentioned, it's rare to find someone that you can make physics, quantum mechanics joke with. And I think it's um, an honor for me to meet all the smart people all over the world and have a conversation with them.